The first thing I'm going to do is replace this port. Let's see if we can get a look inside here. This has got a ball port sealer, which uh, pretty much sucks. I might work one time, but that's about it. What I'm going to do is replace this with a Schrader type seal so we can replace it anytime the valve goes bad. Lost all my refrigerant, so I don't have to do an evacuation. Here is the Dorman part number 800 955. So this is my old R134A manifold set. Uh, it's probably 15 years old and I figured it's time for an upgrade. This is the Pittsburgh Harbor Freight brand manifold gauge. It was for coupon. It's also on sale for a little bit more than that. But got our hoses we've got our manifold and we've got these things which I don't have which are these uh, thumb lock they turn and uh, depress the Schrader valve on the service boards so I looked at just getting these thumb valves and they were like 20 23 dollars so I just figured hey I'm just going to get a whole new manifold gauge set. These also had good reviews too. So let's get this put together. So right now I'm going to hook up my gauges and my vacuum pump. This is the vacuum pump. And this is to my manifold. I'm not going to connect it to the micron gauge because I'm not sure if I can get uh, 500 mics so I want to hook it up to my manifold gauge so I can see what it is in uh, PSI G if there's a leak like in that compressor or front seal then I'll basically be waiting forever because I'll never get a reading on my vacuum gauge because it only starts reading at a certain amount of microns so if I look at my manifold gauge I can look at it in inches Vacuum wool and maybe some water vapor. So beside right here with my micron gauge, this is going to be reading 000 for basically forever. So this display is going to give me give me accurate and when it gets up close to 29.92, then I'll be able to hook up the micron gauge so I want to come back here in a few minutes and if it's still at this 2658 then there's definitely a leak somewhere that's letting air in and not letting me get um, more of a vacuum so what I'm gonna do is I'll do a pressure test I'll add some nitrogen to the system and a trace bit of R134A so I can get my leak detector on this. So I'll be back when it's at minus 29, hopefully. What we're looking at here is the boiling point of water at a specific temperature based on variations of vacuum. And we see um, it's 80, 81 degrees outside right now. So if we come across here, we're gonna be looking at 28 Point nine two inches of vacuum so if I get stuck there for a very long time that means there's plenty of water and moisture in the system that's boiling off so once all that is boiled off then the vacuum will start creeping back to a deep vacuum I've got these ports closed she's a leaker this is sealed off the center hose is sealed off and you can see my pressure is going back up so that's a pretty big leak there so let's get started and hook up the refrigerant first 
this is uh, pure R134A. I don't have any, I don't buy uh, leak sealers or dye or anything like that. So here I've got the old Pierce type can of R134A. And here's the new self sealing type. They use different taps. You can see this one here has a needle which will puncture when it's screwed on and tighten down. And this self sealing, it will not puncture, it will just press the button to release the refrigerant. So, what I'm going to do first is put a little bit enough refrigerant in there to uh, be able to trace it with the electronic leak detector. From self sealing cam because I want to be able to reuse this later. Uh, when I actually fill the system after I've got everything back together, I'll use these two cans of Pierce type because I need <clears throat> two pounds and these two cans will give me 24 ounces. So I'll need uh, about eight more ounces from here. Alrighty, so I hooked up the uh, refrigerant going up to my manifold and right now I've got <clears throat> close to 60 PSI and it won't be going up any further than that so I'm going to shut off my manifold here and this is screwed all the way up so it should be disconnected should be just uh, dust come out and if I wanted to I could take this uh, tap off and the scan is supposed to stay sealed it also stays sealed since I've got the uh, depressor screwed all the way up so let's get some nitrogen in here these are two different types of leak detectors. We got our bubble leak detector and we got electronic leak detector. So I'm going to start with electronic first. So I'm going to start up sensing. I'm going to turn on, use the default sensitivity, and then reset for ambient conditions. And I've already found my leak. This is the wind right now. Set it down one. I've already found my leak right over here. There we go. This is still around the compressor. And just for grins, I want to use the uh, leak detector. Bubbles, 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 bubbles are troubles. Yeah, we got bubbles. Instant replay. Come I alone